Our goal for this video is to evaluate this really interesting integral. So we have the definite integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the power of the floor of 1 over x dx. So before we get started, let's just explore a little bit. So notice that if x is between 1 half and 1, what that tells us is that 1 over x is between 1 and 2. Notice we have to flip the inequality when we reciprocate, but what that tells us is that the floor of 1 over x equals 1. So, um, on this interval 1 half to 1, the floor is a constant of 1. So that's interesting to know. We could maybe split this up into um, some different intervals. And then furthermore, if you take uh, the subinterval 1 third to 1 half, on this subinterval we have um, x is between 2 and 3, which tells us that the floor of 1 over x equals 2. So in other words, on this subinterval, this floor is a constant of 2. So that's the main idea behind this, is to break this interval 0, 1 up into a bunch of pieces, infinitely many pieces in fact, um, where on those pieces this floor is constant. But that's not what we're going to do. I urge you guys to play with this solution in order to uh, get a solution in that direction. We're actually going to do a substitution which makes this a little bit easier to work with where we will deal with just this um, subinterval directly instead of having to take the reciprocal. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll get going with that substitution. Okay, so on the last board, we argued that we're going to have to split this up into infinitely many integrals, really a sum of infinitely many integrals. And then I noted that it's going to be easier to do that with a substitution than it is directly. So let's see what substitution we should use. Well, there's really only one choice, and that's 1 over x. You might think, well, what about just substituting for that whole floor of 1 over x? But that's not going to work too well because we need to take a derivative of something, and there's not really a good way to take a derivative of something like that. So let's go ahead and we'll let um, u equal 1 over x. But notice that's going to mean that x equals 1 over u, um, but that makes dx equal to minus 1 over u squared. Great. So that is going to be our main driver for our substitution, along with obviously this which built the whole thing. Now we need to figure out what happens to the bounds of integration. So notice these are x values right here. So, and x equals 0 is really an improper part of the integral because we have 1 over x. So really we have x approaching 0 from above. So notice if x approaches 0 from above, um, that is going to make u approach positive infinity. So that's pretty obvious by this definition right here. And then if x uh, equals 1, we don't need to do any sort of limit there because this function's okay, then that's going to make u equal to 1. So that allows us to rewrite this integral completely in terms of u like this. We'll have the integral from um, infinity to 1. Notice 0 goes to this positive infinity and 1 goes to 1. And now we have minus... 1 to the floor of u. Great. And then we've got dx, which is negative 1 over u squared. So I'm going to go ahead and put this minus sign out here, and then I've got a u squared in the denominator du. Okay, good. Now the next thing that I want to do is maybe let's take this minus sign and use it to flip the bounds of integration. So we could take this minus sign and flip the bounds of integration to 1 to infinity. Now what we want to do is notice that the floor of u is constant on all of these subintervals, like 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, if we take those as open subintervals or closed from below. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Notice we can write this as an infinite sum. So this is the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1. So notice our first one is going to be the integral from 1 to 2. Two. the second one is from 2 to 3, the next one is 3 to 4, and so on and so forth. 
And now we're going to have minus 1 uh, to the floor of u over u squared du. Great. So we've got something like that going on. So now the next thing that I want to do is notice that this floor of u is going to be a constant on that subinterval. So let's point that out. So if u is between n, it can be equal to n, and strictly less than n plus 1, we know that the floor of u equals n. Great. So that's going to allow us to change this. We can change this floor of u here just to n. But now since that doesn't depend on what we're integrating with respect to, we can just pull it right out of the in integral. So here we have, this is the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. And now we have the integral from n to n plus 1 of 1 over u squared du. But this thing, it's fairly easy to find an antiderivative. Um, that's going to give us the sum n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n. The antiderivative of this thing is going to be minus 1 over u. And now we need to evaluate this from n to n plus 1. Okay. But what I like to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take this minus sign, turn it into a plus, and then switch the bounds of evaluation. So I've got n plus 1 as my bottom bound and n as my top bound. So notice that's going to give me the following sum. I have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. And now I've got uh, 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. But now each of those parts confer converge because they're basically the alternating harmonic series starting at a different point. So that means I can rewrite this as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n 1 over n minus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n plus 1. Okay. But what I like to do here is take this minus sign and turn it into a plus by distributing this through and making that an n plus 1 right there. Okay, so now we're in a good spot. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board. I'll bring this up here and then we'll continue on. So I cleaned up the board and this is where we left off. So notice these sums look very, very similar. They're just indexed a little bit differently. So what I'll do is I'll re-index this first one so that it goes in line with this second one. So let's see what we get if we do that. So here I'm going to take n and replace it with n plus 1. So that's going to make my bottom bound start at 0 instead of 1. So let's just keep that in mind and as we change this. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this out. Here we're going to have uh, the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now, these are almost exactly the same, but what I'm missing here is the zeroth term. So what I'd like to do is add and subtract the zeroth term into this. But notice the zeroth term here is negative 1 over 1. So in other words, it's negative 1. So what I'll go ahead and I'll do, I'll subtract 1 and I'll add 1. And then the subtracting one, I'll combine with that sum, make it the n equals zero term, and then I've got this one added um, on the outside. Let's, so let's see what we get. So we're going to get one, that's from this guy right here, plus this sum uh, n equals one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n plus one, but now we actually have two of those sums because we can take this minus 1, pull it inside, and make that thing start at 0. Good, and that sum should have started at 0 as well. Okay, so now we're in a really good spot. The next thing that I want to do is actually pull out this plus 1 and make this a minus sign. That's not strictly necessary, but it'll make everything a little more obvious in the next step. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n plus 1 
But now I'm going to say that this is the same thing as adding an x to the n plus 1 here. If we evaluate that x from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Great. So obviously evaluating at x equals 0 gives us 0. And then 1 to the power of n plus 1 is clearly 1. So that doesn't change anything. But it does make it look like an antiderivative of something. Notice we've got x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. That looks like the antiderivative of x to the n. So notice here we get 1 minus twice the sum n equals 0 to infinity. We have minus 1 to the n. And now we're going to have the derivative, sorry, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n dx. So notice this definite integral is going to give us this guy right here, which is equal to what we had. Now we're going to change the order of summation and integration, which we can do because this is absolutely convergent. So we have 1 minus 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum n equals 0 to infinity of uh, minus 1 to the n times x to the n, but that's really minus x to the n dx. Great. But that's a geometric series. Notice it's a geometric series with common ratio of negative x. So that gives us 1 minus twice the integral from 0 to 1 of um, 1 over x plus 1. Again, because it's a geometric series with common ratio minus x. Now, taking the antiderivative of that, that's going to give us 1 minus twice natural log of x plus 1. Now we need to evaluate that thing from 0 to 1. So let's see what we get. If we plug in 0, we get natural log of 1, which is 0. Um, and then if we plug in 1, we're going to get natural log of 2, and that gives us our final answer. So it's 1 minus 2 natural log of 2. So that is the final answer for this goal integral. And that finishes this video.